guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoiler free review of Winter Song by S.J. Jones. I am part of the blog tour for this book through St. Martin's Press, so this book was sent to me for review. It comes out on February 7th. This is a young adult fantasy that follows 18-year-old Liesel or Elizabeth, and she is from a very musical family in Germany. All her life, Liesel has heard tales of the Goblin King and even has brief memories of herself potentially playing with the Goblin King as she was growing up, but she has now grown up and has decided that she needs to leave all of that behind and be sensible, and so she is the older sister that takes care of her younger sister and her younger brother. Her younger sister, Kath, is kind of a fanciful girl, very different from Liesel in a lot of ways, very obsessed with beauty and boys and flirting and everything. And her younger brother Yosef is a musical prodigy and Liesel is kind of stuck in the middle, sort of taking care of both of them, but she definitely is closer to Yosef and they both are very musical. Liesel is a composer and composes music, but she kind of lives in Yosef's shadow because he is a expert prodigy violinist and so she very much is focused on Yosef more than Kath. Then one day Kath captures the eye of the underworld of the goblin court and the goblin king and Liesel has to make sure that her sister is safe and everything kind of takes off from there. So first off I'm gonna talk about the world building. This takes place in the past in Germany. I'm not sure what exact century it is or what it's supposed to be, but it's definitely in the past. Liesel is part of an innkeeper family and a musical family and it's very much of a different era, although I'm not exactly sure which era, but that's not the major focus anyway. The world building more takes place in the underworld and in the Goblin King's kind of arena and all of that. I really liked that element. You guys know how I feel about any kind of like going between a life and death, the underworld, you know, like magical courts and the Fae and all that. Like that's that's cool. That's my thing. So I really enjoyed all of that. I didn't feel that it was particularly new or anything, but the interpretation of the underworld I really enjoy, where it's not necessarily like a dark, scary place, but it also does have a twisted, eerie sense to it, but it's not necessarily like hell or anything like that. Like, it's definitely its own, you know, special, unique system. I enjoy that kind of world as far as the underworld, and that's what this was, so always a plus. I do feel like it could have gone a little bit deeper, though. I feel like we could have gotten more. There was plenty of opportunity for us to get more as far as explaining the world, how things work, how the magic works. There is this kind of element of magic comes with a price, which I'm always really into, and that there are old laws and you cannot break these old laws, these magical kind of old laws. That that is cool, you know, like magic gives and it takes away and stuff. That's cool, but I feel like we could have gone a lot deeper with that. There's elements of like different kind of magical mirrors or magical like objects that we just didn't get quite enough of and I would have liked to have gotten more. This also is kind of advertised as a labyrinth retelling, but I discourage you from going in expecting it to be a full labyrinth retelling as far as the movie. I'm not super familiar with the movie. I think I've seen bits and pieces of it, so I'm not like a huge super fan of the movie, but I like the aesthetic of the movie and kind of the themes and stuff. So if you're going into it for that kind of thing, I think that's fine, but this does stray a lot from the movie plot line. So if you're going in for like a direct retelling, you're not going to get that. This is more of a mix of the labyrinth and there's apparently a short story or something called like the Goblin Market that people have been mentioning in reviews and stuff. And I also feel like this has kind of Hades Persephone vibes, kind of Beating the Beast vibes, like all of that kind of mixed in. So definitely expect it to be its own unique story as far as the world and not necessarily like a direct retelling. Next I'm going to talk about the characters. I go back and forth on the characters a little bit with this. I like them a lot and I like some of their interactions, especially Liesl and the Goblin King and their relationship because obviously that's the main focus of this story. But I do find at times that Liesl would go kind of back and forth. There was a lot of sort of a miscommunication plotline, but not really because we have people not being able to say certain things, not being able to tell certain things. But we also have Liesl being incredibly stubborn, but for like little reason, or we have her kind of doing this like, I'm not like other girls thing a little bit, a little bit. So the one cool thing about this is that Liesl is plain. She's incredibly plain, but it's mentioned a lot, but she's incredibly plain. It even says at one point that the Goblin King is not physically attracted to her for her beauty, but that he, you know, like sees more of her and they have this musical thing and whatever. But it's very much nailed into your head that she's not pretty, she's very plain, and that all these other girls and people around her and her sister are very beautiful and very like, you know, flames that burn out too quickly, where Liesl is compared to this like burning, you know, slow burning ember kind of thing. But it gives me these weird, like, 
uh, vibes as far as like, I'm not like other girls and that kind of thing. I kind of was able to look past it, but I know some people won't necessarily be able to. And she definitely, I wouldn't necessarily have, there's not, there's almost this kind of slut shaming thing because her sister's also this very flirtatious person and Liesl is very much not that way. So we have that kind of element of her sister especially being like frivolous and flirty and beautiful and Liesl being like deep and plain and not that way. So it's this weird thing I'm not really sure about because we really don't get any other interactions besides Liesl in the Goblin Court and stuff with like her sister and like a little bit of her family stuff, but we don't get like Lisa with like female friends or anything like that. So it really brings a sense of like her being not like other girls and it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But I really liked her interactions, especially with the Goblin King. The love story there and the dynamic there I find really interesting. I think if you are into Labyrinth and stuff, it's going to be that kind of element that you're really going to enjoy. It does give me Hades Persephone vibes a little bit, even though obviously it's not a direct retelling, but we have these two very flawed people who really are growing to learn and love and trust each other. And that's really cool. And I really just liked their dynamic, but sometimes it can be a little twisted and it, it's interesting and I enjoyed their interactions. But that being said, I'm not sure that we got as far as we could have with any of their characters really. Even the Goblin King, I feel like we don't quite know him. We were dropped hints, especially towards the end of things about him, but I just feel like we and even Liesl don't quite know or understand him fully. And I feel like for a book, which I'm pretty sure is supposed to be a standalone, though I'll get to that in a second, it should have been more wrapped up and I feel like we didn't really get that. Next I'm going to talk about the plot. This book does feel like it struggles with some pacing issues here and there. It does feel like completely separate books as far as the first part and the second part and the different how the characters are developing and different things just feels a little disjointed at times and feels like separate characters and that they change quickly and their motivations change quickly and stuff. So that's a little bit off. Also, I will warn you that this is sort of an upper YA. So Liesl, like I said, at the start of the book is 18. And I have spoken to the author because I met her actually at Y'all Fest. And she said when I met her that this was actually supposed to be an adult book. And then it got picked up as a YA and they had to kind of edit things down. So there is some mature content in here. It's advertised as a YA and it's not necessarily super explicit. It's not necessarily like, I don't know, ACMAF or something, but it's up there. It's a lot more explicit than other books. There's a lot more explicit sexual encounters happening and descriptions and stuff. So if you're not into sex in your books, definitely tread kind of carefully here. But at the same time, I also feel like those elements were supposed to be more. And I feel like I would have known that even without knowing that it was originally supposed to be an adult book because there's things that feel very edited down. And I feel like it was supposed to be a lot more of that kind of very passionate relationship and it got cut out because of the genre that it got put into and I feel like a lot of different elements of the plot that were supposed to be in there kind of got cut down. So that's a little bit disappointing because I feel like the disjointedness was because it was kind of changed genre wise. I mean Labyrinth and a lot of the things that it's supposed to be based on kind of you know Beauty and the Beast stuff like that a lot of those have like mature themes in there and are like more adult stories. So I feel like it really should have been an adult story. Even S.J. Jones writing style feels a little more adult literary fiction-y at times. Like it just feels a little more and that it was kind of edited to fit into a different classification. Also, I'm not sure if this is going to be a standalone. It's one of those books that I wouldn't be surprised if it did really well if we would suddenly have a sequel, like if it wouldn't necessarily be a duology, because there's a lot of things that weren't quite wrapped up, especially towards the end, we got hints of other things that weren't necessarily wrapped up, things with her family, things with the Goblin King and their relationship and stuff. And I feel like it was going a different direction than right at the very end, it kind of cut a different way, not necessarily in a twist way, just in a way that it's like, is there going to be more to this? Is there potentially more to this? I can see this doing well and there being more to this, you know, like that kind of feeling. So I feel like this wasn't necessarily wrapped up as well as I would have liked it to be or in the direction I thought it was really going for most of the book. And there are times this book can be very slow. And like I said, that's why the writing style kind of feels 
almost more literary fiction-y because it really kind of slows down and focuses on these character interactions. There's this big focus on music in here and kind of piecing that out and descriptions and stuff. So a lot of the writing is very beautiful and a lot of the like character dynamic stuff is very beautiful, but I feel like a lot of it is, is evident through this review. I feel like it didn't quite make it to where it could have been. I feel like it got kind of pieced out and like certain things got cut and it should have been in there and I feel like this could have been a little bit more. Ultimately I did enjoy the story. I'm still glad that I read it. I wish it was an adult novel, you know, because I feel like it could have been a tad bit more. Like I feel like there's stuff on the cutting room floor that I would have liked to have seen. I gave Winter Song three out of five stars. So comment down below and let me know if you plan on reading Winter Song or if you've already read it, what you thought of it. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!